at all. I think it requires a lot of uh, conviction and fundamentally hunger um, to be able to go and actually achieve the mission that you set out on. And I think being a serial entrepreneur requires triple the amount of hunger because once you've done it once and um, uh, once you've done it once somewhat successfully and actually made some money to actually go back and have the same hunger or if not even more hunger to go again um, just just requires that fire in the belly. And I think that's, that, that's the single ingredient which I point out. <laughs> I'm a British Indian. I've been operating in India for over two decades now. Um, and, and I've just seen an incredible development of the, 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 the whole local ecosystem in terms of the number of businesses which have been built, the talent which has been fostered, how that talent has gone on to build their own, to build their own entrepreneurial organizations in the technology space and had incredible success doing so. With that, India has always had incredible raw talent, but over the last two, two plus decades, that raw talent has been given the opportunity to actually be trained in different, in different areas in terms of um, clearly services initially, technology, and then company building. And all of that put together, I would say, has, has given such a depth of talent pool in India, which means that when, when we look at operating in India today, it's very much as, as, as part of our core operations. And we don't view India in any way as a back office. I mean, we have um, client facing teams who are based in India. Um, we have individuals who have incredible seniority who are based in India. And if anything, they actually um, on individual projects, they'll be managing people in other locations, including the UK um, on those projects. So in a way for us, India is really a place to source very, very strong talent, um, which is as integrated with our clients as, as any other part of our business. <laughs> Dramatically, when you go back, I mean, if you really think about the first boom in Indian tech talent, it was all around the Y2K bug. Let's say that there was more, um, uh, there was more processing and developing under instruction, um, going from there to actually building product businesses um, and, and having those product businesses now being products which global clients are using is a dramatic evolution in terms of, in terms of how the, the technology talent has, has moved. So it's moved from um, being very, as I say, very, very sort of process focused to actually being innovative um, and focused on how, how to actually develop product. Um, and and that's, that is a massive change. I think it's very much that. I think it's um, a, a talent pool, which is incredibly rich and deep. Um, and, and, and one which also the, the work ethic is incredibly strong. Um, and you put those ingredients together, ultimately that's why we, that, that, that's why we have operations out of India. Um, and that, that same equation I think applies to any global company. It's just a question of whether those global companies are innovative enough to understand that, um, that actually tapping that talent is, is a competitive advantage or not. <laughs> So look, as I said, India is very much a core part of our operation and organization. So we will continue to build and continue to operate um, our Indian operation and it will continue to expand very much in sync with, um, with our overall operation. So um, uh, today we probably have more than half of our total team, um, just, about, um, just about over half um, actually in India. Um, and, and I think that proportion will, will probably maintain um, as we continue to expand. So it'll expand as, as quickly as we expand as a business. <laughs> UK and India have always had um, a strong relationship. And earlier this year, there was an agreement officially recognizing um, each other's sort of higher education qualifications. Um, obviously, um, Narendra Modi met with uh, Rishi Sunak at, at the G20 and, and talking about sort of the, the UK-India um, trade opportunity. 
identifying it as a very strong opportunity, but again, um, cautious in terms of ensuring that there's, there's there's strong rigor and quality to the trade agreement versus versus sort of rushing to put something in. Um, so so I think that um, there's there's strong recognition in the UK that actually pairing ourselves and having strong trade with higher growth countries is is a positive thing. Um, so I think that the that relationship is one where you know which we see the the historic ties being strengthened um, on a go forward basis. <laughs> Do love reading and i would say that many like like with many things in life you pick up strings from different places and you you put them together right um i think that um if i was if i was to uh, i'll give you one book which i would say is very very widely read um and has had strong impact and i'll give you one which is i've recently read um, so the widely read is the hard things about the hard thing about hard things. Um, and, um, one, which I've recently read, which, which again, I'd sort of say pull strings from is, uh, genius makers, uh, by, by code Mets. Um, so th that's not one, it's two, but two different themes. <laughs>